welcome back to my channel. So today is really exciting for me because I've been working on this outfit for weeks and weeks. It feels like forever, it's probably not that long, but I am finally ready to show you what I've been working on. There is this company called Foundations Revealed, which a famous costumer named Kathy Hay started, and they do a themed costume contest every year. So the theme this year was create a costume based on a literary character. It couldn't, you couldn't use movies or anything like that. It had to be based on the book. So the character that I chose is from the series Bloody Jack by L.A. Meyer, which nobody I know remembers that series, so hopefully y'all have heard of it, but mild spoilers, I am the pirate that the main character shoots to earn the nickname Bloody Jack. So yeah, if you want to know how I made this ensemble, stick around. Alright, to get started, let's draw out some of the pieces we're going to have to cut out for the shirt. My measurements are gonna look a little bit different than Bernadette's because she used a 60 inch wide fabric and I didn't check that before I bought my two yards of my 40 inch fabric. So we're gonna have to squeeze if we wanna get everything that we need out of this. I just finished cutting and honestly, I'm so proud of myself right now. I just need to share. I've got everything cut out, so my body, my sleeves, my collar, gussets, cuffs, and reinforcement patches. And this, <laughs> this is all I had left over. This is it, this is all my scraps. I, I've never been more impressed with my math skills than I am right now. <laughs> okay, I got a little excited, so I did this off camera, but this is where we're at right now with the shirt. So I have gone ahead Fold it in half and pinned all the sides together, leaving the arm side kind of open, just where that gusset's gonna go and where the sleeve's gonna set in. But here's where the neck is. So I ended up changing my neck measurement to 10 inches for the shoulder just to give it a little bit more droop. I've pinned and marked the center. This is where the chest hole, I don't know what you would call that, the, I don't know, where a button placket would go on a button down. It's way too big for my shoulders, but we're gonna gather all of this excess up into the collar so it's gonna be really poofy. I'm gonna cut five inches first and then we'll see where we're at and maybe cut to the full eight. So up the sleeve and don't be like me and have to seam rip out the two and a half inches at the end by the cuff that you're supposed to leave so that your hand can get through. shirt is almost done. I've attached the collar, I've hemmed everything I can hem, the bottom is done, and now the moment that I have been procrastinating is here. I have to attach the sleeves, and I don't want to attach the sleeves. I'm really scared. So from what I understand, I have to gather the top of the sleeve bit down, scrunch it down really small, and then the gore is what gets attached. Here. I'm just really nervous. I don't know how this is going to work because I was planning on machine sewing it. So <sighs> there's nothing else left to do on this shirt and we only have two weeks until the contest deadline, which means I actually have to start on it now and I can't just put it off. So yay.
Oh my god, go away. Go. Go. In the arms of the angel. Hey, guess what, y'all? My shirt's done. <laughs> Just kidding. It's terrible, and I have to rip it out. Apparently, following Bernadette's tutorial wasn't the best idea. You can see the neck area is really weird. There's like this weird gathering thing going on. The arm size is way too small and it looks comically bad on me. And to top it all off, the body is a tent. <sighs> I have to do it all over again. Well, not all over again, but basically everything. I have to rip the sleeves off, take off like seven inches from the sides, redo the collar, add some neck gussets. It's gonna be a time. Okay, so now that the shirt is done, it's time to move on. Originally, what inspired this whole outfit was this 90s skirt suit I thrifted two years ago and never got around to do anything with it. I've kind of dismantled it now, but it used to have long sleeves and I'll show a picture. But if you look at it up close, it has a lot of really cool embroidery detail, uh, which a lot of Regency stuff did, and I thought it'd be really cool for a 1790s men's vest. The problem is, it's really complicated and I don't have time. I have three days until I need to be done with this. So I figured I would do pants now and then finish the vest in a later video just to complete the outfit. So for the foundations reveal project specifically, I'm gonna be doing pants. Now, the pants that I am doing are 1790s men's pants from Kinnick Corner. The problem is these are fall front pants, which basically is like you know in baby onesies where you unbutton the buttons and then you pull the flap back and then the babies can pee? That's what it looks like and it, it looks really awkward. <laughs> and I know it's historically accurate, but I don't love it. So I decided to take that Canix Corner pattern and modify it to something closer to the 1750s, which was just a button down front. It's called a fly front pant. So that's, that's the direction I'm going in, which means I have three days to modify a pattern and make it up as I go along, basically. Vaguely historically accurate. I'm just going with maybe the pirate had a buddy who had old pants and just stole them from him and that's why he has 40 year old pants. I don't know. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. So I've got my pattern pieces pretty much modified. I didn't change too much. The only thing I really changed, you can see I added the button fly placket thing here to the front of this. This will get pressed over and sewn down as a way to cover the actual buttons because I don't want the buttons to, you know, show and stand out while I'm wearing it. I had to extend the waistband a little bit because, I don't know, maybe I'm fatter than I thought I was. <laughs> but other than that, we're good to go. We're good to start cutting. Next, I folded down the curved edge of the pocket facing a quarter of an inch, pressed that, and then attached it to the pocket with a hem stitch, which is basically just a felling stitch, but without any of the folding. Okay, time to attach the pocket to the pants. Prick stitches are really simple. It's basically a felling stitch again, but instead of just catching the threads on the front of the fabric, you push your needle all the way out the back, go over a couple of threads, maybe a millimeter, and come back out the front and catch the lining that is inset an eighth of an inch. It should look like a spiral felling stitch on the lining side and then a tiny, tiny, tiny running stitch on the right side of the fabric on the other side. the waistband pieces together pretty much the same way I attached the pockets to the pant legs. Folded, pressed, and then sewed down with a prick stitch. I didn't end up filming myself making the fly bit, but I will link the tutorial that I followed down below and hopefully you can figure out what I did. Since I added the fly shield to the right and attached the right waistband to it, I had to cut that same width off of the left waistband so that they would remain even and the pleats would be even. Just make sure when you're attaching your waistband and sewing it all down, you go really slowly and smooth everything out below as you go. I left the sides of each of the waistband pieces open but pressed so that when I go to attach it to the pant pieces, it's easier for me to fold it over and attach to the inside lining.
probably the most awkward public photo shoot I've ever done in my whole life. <laughs> but we did it. We're done. The submission got entered like with minutes to spare for the deadline. I am so relieved to be done. I feel like this massive weight has lifted off my shoulders and I'm so thrilled with how it turned out. Most of, most of the, these two pieces are handmade, like com almost completely handmade. Hours and hours and hours of work and they fit. <laughs> they actually fit me. I wasn't expecting that. There are a few things I wish that I had done a little bit differently. Um, like the sleeves are, are a bit too poofy. I think the proportions I followed for the sleeve poof are meant for someone who's significantly bigger than I am, i.e. a man. So I end up looking more like the Michelin man and less like Mr. Darcy, which is not what I was going for, but that's fine. Pirates aren't very good at making clothes anyway. And the other thing is I need to take a little bit of the poof out of the butt area. I think it's the pleats. I think it's the pleats in the butt that really make it poof out, but it's not terribly flattering. So I need to take like an inch or two out of the seat and then it'd be all right. But I love the things that I love about this outfit. Um, first of all, the gold buttons on the black linen look just chef kiss. I, they're so beautiful. And I was really debating not using them because I was like, I don't know if that's like too gaudy. No, it looks it looks even better in person, I'm not gonna lie. The second thing I love about this outfit is <laughs> the massive pockets. They, I'm really jealous of menswear because men have, I mean, they have pockets to begin with. They have pockets, but these pockets are big pockets and they're hidden pockets and they have they're just the, they're just really cool and I'm re I feel really cool when I use them. But yeah, other than that, I mean, I'm so thrilled that you guys came along with me for the journey. For my first foray into, you know, real historical costuming, I think this was a success. But anyway, so I thank you so much for sticking with me and and following this journey of mine. I hope that you consider liking and subscribing and I will see you next time.